Good evening. Our opening song is All Are Welcome. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. I shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become it shall bear excuse me it shall be put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it every winged thing in the shade of its boughs and all the trees of the field shall know that I the Lord bring low the high tree lift high the lowly tree wither up the green tree and make the withered tree bloom as i the lord have spoken so will i do the word of the lord A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, always, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The Word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, He explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. To the eyes of many in the world today, the Gospel the gospel message of Jesus Christ seems to be filled with to some contradiction, mystery, and paradox. Yet, ironically, these very qualities reveal the beauty, sophistication, strength, and vigor of the gospel good news. As a result, Jesus Christ does not desire to reduce and lessen the mystical dimension of the gospel, which might explain why Jesus spoke in parables. Jesus wanted to teach his disciples his message in a manner that they could understand. And sometimes they didn't understand, and sometimes we don't understand. That is to say, he used a device of comparative story and creative imagery to prompt people to see how present, active, and involved God the Father is in every day ordinary experiences. Parables serve as a suitable and fitting way for disciples to understand the Holy Gospel because they root divine revelation in what is familiar. By making the ordinary and everyday experiences the principles of his preaching, Jesus Christ guides each of us to use what is already well known to us as a standard for coming to know the truth that's revealed to us in Jesus Christ. In this way, the parables can assist us to make the power of Jesus Christ's message even more compelling. In other words, the parables are a great gift of consolation, for they reassure us that the great riches of heaven are accessible to us through our attention to God's interaction with us on earth. There's nothing foreign, alien, or unnatural about the gospel good news. The more that we ponder it, the more we ponder sacred scripture, how the word became flesh and dwelt among us, the more that we can participate in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. In today's gospel from St. Mark, Jesus Christ wants to teach us some truths about the reign of God. First, it is important for each of us to realize that the transformation by grace that occurs within our hearts and minds many, many times happens without our even knowing how it happens. 
It happens through the gift of grace, the grace that we receive in all seven of the sacraments, grace that conforms us more to be like Jesus Christ. In our modern technological age in which we have so much knowledge, and some of it's useless, in my opinion, for so many things, it is easy to think that ultimately we are the ones who are in charge of everything. And then when we think that, we often forget about God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Maybe that's why Jesus Christ teaches us that the grace of the kingdom of God grows within us without the full comprehension of our minds, without us completely understanding. There are things called mysteries. There's a mystery of faith. There's the mystery of the Holy Eucharist. There's the Paschal mystery. The mysteries are there for us to believe, and gradually we grow to come to some understanding. Today's gospel asks us to confine ourselves to the mystery of the kingdom of God in order to partake of its abundant harvest. Our attempts to second-guess God's providential love and care only deprive each of us of the joy, the joy of seeing how God the Father himself takes that initiative and engineers that increase of his divine favors of grace in our life of faith. We need to pray and to abandon ourselves in order to allow God to form and perfect us according to his will, his schedule, his design, and his plan. It isn't easy to do, but we should try. At the same time, divine providence demands that we withhold our judgment about our own suitability for greatness in God's eyes. Recall what we learned in today's gospel from Jesus when he spoke of the mustard seed. <clears throat> the mustard seed, as Jesus said, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. It would be very easy to overlook it, to dismiss it, to discount it, and to reject it. However, if the mustard seed is entrusted to the divine sower, recall what Jesus said. It grows up and becomes the largest of all the shrubs. If we long to experience the flourishing of the kingdom of God within our own lives, then we must fend off that temptation to think of ourselves as inadequate, unworthy, and ill-equipped for personal holiness. We all are, but what about the grace of God? The goodness of God, the Father, alone makes us worthy of his loving care. The smallest and the weakest we perceive in our life are there maybe to get us to trust ourselves more completely to the greatness and power of God's compassionate mercy. Moreover, when we do, we become great in his sight, big enough not to the birds of the sky, but to thrive as a dwelling place of God. God the Father gave up his Son, Jesus Christ, so that we might be saved through him. In our vocation as faith-filled disciples, we can be spiritual leaders and guardians within our families. We can pray for and with our families. We can be courageous witnesses to the gospel within our world. We can provide care and support for others. We can serve as examples of goodness and moral truth. We can lead with courage and fervor accountability, and of course, with mercy and charity. And we can finally lay down our lives for others. We are called in a very special way to reflect God, our Father's unconditional love and forgiveness. Like the farmer in today's gospel reading, who relentlessly scattered seeds night and day, God the Father never gives up on us. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Like a great tree with flourishing branches, or like sea quietly growing, so the kingdom of God increases. We make our prayers together as our share in that loving plan of divine providence. The response is recited, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church will stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who hold public office will imitate the goodness of God, who secures justice and the rights of the oppressed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are preparing for marriage, that the Lord will strengthen them to live with sacrificial love, faithful to each other and to the church all the days of their life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety and blessings upon all travelers, especially for families during these months of summer vacation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those in the military, for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, may they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for the living and deceased members of St. Michael and St. Margaret Church. For this Mass, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Father Schill, Vicki Morris, aunt of Father Christopher, and Brian Bedner, nephew of Deacon Marty Abel, and Sue Weaver, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause now and add your own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Father, you are the source of all goodness and grace. Hear these prayers we make as our intercession for others. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory 
of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. There is only one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Set the prison. 
prisoners free and never be the same. Will you kiss the leper clean and to such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you If I but call your name, will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch? and sound in you and you in me.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. We we'll offer the prayer in time of pandemic. Lord Jesus, you came to bring salvation to our world. You humbled yourself to accept death on a cross. Be with us as we confront the spread of the coronavirus with courage and hope. Present to the sick and to those who accompany them in their suffering. Strengthen our medical professionals and caregivers. Comfort families who are separated from one another. Protect those who are at risk of the virus in your work. Grant wisdom to our civic officials and perseverance to scientists. Spare us from the ravages of this illness and console us in our uncertainty and fear. Unite us in hope and lightness and faith and give us the grace as a church to love one another as you have loved us. Through the intercession of our Heavenly Mother Mary and St. Joseph, we make this prayer as we place our trust in you. Amen. Just two short announcements. On Wednesday was Father Schill's Mass of Christian Burial. It was a very wonderful, if you say, a wonderful funeral Mass, but it truly did, you know, commemorate a wonderful priest, a good confessor, and a friend to so many. It was uh, just was a nice, nice funeral. And secondly, just to thank everyone for your cards, your well wishes, your gifts on the occasion of my. 11th anniversary to the priesthood. Just thank you especially too for all your prayers. You are salt for the earth, O oh people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O oh people, life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring 